Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Hendy, the Android Authority app guy, and it's Friday, and you know what that means. This week, we're going to talk about a bunch of new advertisements, a bunch of applications on sale, and a bunch of application updates, as well as Virus Shield. Again. So let's go. In our first bit of news this week, the Google Play Store is having a spring sale that features 19 games. Some of the more well-known games on the list include The Room 2, The Dark Knight Rises, Riptide GP2, Need for Speed Most Wanted, and 10 million, but pretty much every game on the list is pretty enjoyable. It is not known how long this sale will continue, so if you're up for buying a few awesome games, now is the time to do it. It's also worth mentioning that the sales page may not be up for all regions. This usually is not a problem, as you can just go to the game itself in the Play Store and get the discounted rate there. If you want the full list and links to each one, we'll have that linked in the written companion, which is in in the video description below. Google announced earlier this week that they're going to be bringing app install ads as well as deep app linking to both Google Search and YouTube. Okay, so these two pieces of news mean two wildly different things. If you're a frequent visitor of sites like Yahoo or Facebook, you've seen app install ads before. It's essentially an ad that, when you click on it, will install the advertised application directly to your device. This is meant to help bolster app downloads and get people out of their shells to try some new things. Arguably, the more interesting piece of news here is the deep app linking. Here's an example of how this would work. Work. Say you did a search for House MD. Advertisements in the results would point you to things like Netflix. If you were a Netflix subscriber, you could click on that advertisement and then Netflix would open on your device and put you on the House MD page. Ostensibly, this would make advertisements more useful and would probably generate not only more clicks, but encourage people to use their Android devices and Android apps more in their everyday lives. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Virus Shield, the world's most useless application. This week, Google is sending out refunds. People who purchased the application all received an email from Google apologizing for not taking quicker action against the waste of space that was adorning their top paid apps list. Along with the email came a redeem code that people could use to get a $5 Google Play credit so they could go purchase something else. And with that, the story of Virus Shield comes to a close, and we sincerely hope there won't be any more of them. So Google Hangouts got an update this last week that takes SMS messages and Hangouts messages and merges them into one thread along with some other features. People seem to be really happy about this update and I guess I can see why. It helps clean up the multiple threads problem and makes the experience more streamlined. Ironically, the update also included a separation of phone contacts from Hangouts contacts, so while messages are mixed, contacts are now separate. It's a good update and pretty much everyone should have it by now. I was really hoping for something like SMS support and Chrome extension or a standalone Hangouts application on desktop, but this is still good too. You know, baby steps. In our last bit of news this week, Samsung is bringing advertisements to Milk Music and it's causing mayhem worldwide. N not really. This is kind of a big deal because its original selling point was that it was ad-free. However, as the fine print states, the ad-free part was for a limited time only, and unfortunately, that limited time is running out faster than we would have liked. Here's the thing, even with the advertisements, this is still a pretty decent music service for Samsung devices. It is still free to use, and it's still powered by Slacker Radio, which means you're still getting more music than you would with Pandora. It's not going to stop people from being angry about it, and that's okay, but if you have it and you're wondering if you should go back to Pandora or another music music service, I'd wait and see how bad these ads are before tossing it away for good. So who wants to check out some trending applications? As usual, if you want to check any of these applications out, you can find the links in the written companion, which is in the video description below. First to get the nod this week is ES File Explorer. It's already ragingly popular, but if you're a root user, ES File Explorer's latest update can be really helpful. It includes a new root-only permission that allows it to read and write to your SD card, thus circumventing the new Android KitKat SD card limitation problem. Currently, it is one of only a few file managers that can do this, so if you're rooted and suffering from the KitKat SD card blues, ES File Explorer has you covered. If you're a fan of the original Baldur's Gate, then I've got some good news for you. The original game has been re-released for Android with some enhancements to make the mobile experience better. It's one of the better action RPGs to come out over the last 15 years, and it seems to continue that proud tradition. There are in-app purchases that include more missions, re-recorded voice sets, and artwork. It's a little expensive at $9.99, but you're looking at 60 hours of gameplay, so it's probably worth it. Another big game released this week was Amazing Spider-Man 2 from Gameloft. They just finished up releasing Captain America a couple of weeks ago, and now there's a new Spider-Man game. The graphics are actually pretty good, and the gameplay looks like it's a lot of fun. You play as Spider-Man as you battle against classic bad guys as well as new bad guys. The only potential issue is that the game costs $4.99 and also contains in-app purchases. Gameloft seems to really want to push it with their customers, but the game still rates a 4.1 in the Google Play Store, at least for right now. I know this isn't as exciting as other releases, but 
but there was a Farmville game released by Zynga this last week. We did a review here on Android Authority, and I'll link to that here at the end of the video, as well as the video description below. This is the essential Farmville experience with the classic Farmville mechanics. If you like and play Farmville, you know what this game is about. If you didn't like it then, you probably won't like it now. At the very least, it is free to play. Last up this week is the now venerable Clash of Clans. This insanely popular online multiplayer strategy game got an update recently that has introduced a new game type called Clan Wars. The concept is very simple, your clan goes up against other clans and you battle it out for a few days. It adds some new life to an aging premise and they managed to do it in a way that newer and veteran players can enjoy. The game is free as usual so there's no harm in checking it out. Once again, I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority App Guy. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to follow Android Authority, myself, or the rest of the video team, you can find all of our social media links in the video description below. If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there, including the breakdown of the OnePlus One release event, as well as my review of Farmville 2. Finally, don't forget to check out the written companion in the video description below for all of the download links. As always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.